Welcome to Coming Home, Thrive and Survive in Homeschooling. Recently, my advice was sought regarding what a good maths curriculum would be if parents did want to buy one for an early school age child. The question came from someone who had already listened to Mrs. Maths in episode 13, but needed a bit more nitty gritty advice. I'm really thrilled when queries like this come in because it's showing me where you need more detail in your homeschooling life to help you make decisions. Since it's been a fair while since I had a five-year-old, I thought I'd ask a chat group I'm in who are still at the cold face, so to speak, as to what they'd recommend. But before that, just let me mull over my thoughts with you. The privilege of homeschooling is we get to choose how our children are educated. We wax and wane over the years of how we do things, not being trapped or obliged to keep to any particular system. Whether it's a new baby, sickness or anything else, Choose what works for you at the time. There is no right or wrong way. There are, however, ways to learn that could be more effective for your children, especially if they learn well with more hands-on than written work. Just figure out what works best for you and your children. Once you've done that, stop looking for something better It's confusing and a big distraction. You'll know the signs when it could be time to change tack. Frustration, boredom, naughtiness, you get the picture. I highly recommend a maths book is your secondary approach to homeschooling a young child. If this was me, I would use it when I needed her to do some unsupervised work whilst I needed to do something else. Or a day when you're done with thinking and you just need to grab something. Please note this doesn't mean I wouldn't use the occasional worksheet for her to practice basic writing of numerals and later sums. She doesn't need to write a sum down to do maths. The written version is what the mind can already do. It's much faster for her to tell you what all the plus twos are than write them down. Mental maths is so important. Later on, when there are double, triple or more figures, working them out on paper is a necessary skill. Next, think about your state of mind and assumptions about maths. Is there an underlying way of thinking that real maths is in books? Well, fair enough. The way we were taught would be deep in our psyche. In our early years, we did choose a maths workbook for the children as their primary means of doing maths. For our younger children, We used them less as we now had more confidence. If you like a hands-on, experiential approach as your main tool for maths, then keep using the tactile, everyday examples of maths, always remembering that the world is your classroom as your first maths resource. You will become more confident as time goes on and you see the evidence of this before you. Until then, it feels a little bit like you're working on faith in a way to teach maths a little differently. You can see the successes of other homeschooling parents to help guide you. So when you do need to choose a maths curriculum to use as part of your maths teaching, these are the books and companies my friends on the chat group recommended. These options seem to fit the bill for those wanting to know how to incorporate games and manipulatives rather than setting up from scratch. From there, you could include, exclude or increase according to need. 
I'm going to read exactly what some of these ladies said. The most popular recommendation is right start. Heidi says, my four-year-old started this year. It's fun and games and manipulatives sets them up so well. Level A is definitely aimed at little ones and goes right up to level F with G and H being more supplementary. They're levels rather than years because it's spiral as opposed to mastery. A big reason why I'd start with a program as opposed to just winging it as they can learn bad habits. Right start is less about learning to add than it is about subitizing, learning many different strategies and being exposed to a bunch of cool concepts right from tiny. And if you'd like to know what subitizing is, it is the rapid, accurate and confident judgments of numbers performed for small numbers of items. Captures a feeling of immediately knowing how many items lie within the visual scene. Christina said, I use Right Start for my lads also. One is now working as a software developer. Must have helped. Joanna, another vote for Right Start Level A if starting with a five-year-old or beginner. I'm finding I've moved through it too slow and my six and a half year old is finding it way too simple but for a younger kid it's perfect. I also agree that just doing life can be enough to teach math skills but probably a more daunting approach for a beginner. I thought those were really helpful assessments of right start from some experienced homeschool mums who are actually doing it. Daisy said they did Math UC and Math Seeds from Reading Eggs. Huda Maths, she said, have great games. Nessie has maths in game form. My kids played it, not even knowing it was maths. Sounds good. Christina, also really good practice to improve understanding of the concepts is the IXL online math tutoring program. Joanna says Life of Fred books are good too for a different approach to maths, quirky and designed to be read as a story while explaining mathematical principles, but they are US based rather than New Zealand. Thank you, ladies. That was so helpful because, as I say, I am not working with the latest curriculum at the moment and I was so sure they could help and they delivered. I hope that's helped you to decide what's best for your little one. As I said at the beginning of this podcast, a question like this gets me smiling. If you have queries, I'd love to hear them. It's highly likely they will become a podcast. I'm sure you're not the only one asking the question, so go ahead. You'll be helping other homeschool parents. On that note, if you found this helpful, please subscribe, share, like, you know the drill. It helps the dratted algorithm in YouTube, and you'll be doing other homeschoolers a favour because they'll be more likely to see it consider it a public service. See you next week.